Hello again there, uh, Church of the Living God, brothers and sisters. This is part two of the video that is specifically for uh, you sisters, you women, you ladies of the Church of the Living God. In the previous video, uh, we were primarily in the Old Testament, looking at examples for your instruction in righteousness um, of what God looks at for a godly woman. We looked at Sarah, okay? We looked uh, briefly at the wife of Manoah, Abigail, okay, who became David's wife. We also saw Jezebel. We looked into Jezebel, who is a type of the Roman Catholic Church. And we saw in Jezebel the evil, manipulative wickedness that is very uh, present in the Roman Catholic Church. And those uh, who are women who proclaim that they are Christians, you see a lot of that uh, of Jezebel and a lot, of, especially here on YouTube. <laughs> you see a lot in these women that um, that Jezebel within them, okay? Especially when they're like Butch Myers, you know, <laughs> trying to teach and you, you um, usurp authority over the men, which is, no, the Lord does not want that, okay? As part of the consequences of that, um, in the book of Isaiah, it says, uh, where offhand I cannot remember, I think it's in Isaiah chapter 5, it's like, as for my children, as for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over you. Okay? We have to remember that the order according to the scriptures is God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, man, woman, children. Again, the feminazis, these Jezebels make it God, woman, children, man. If you want to get accurate with it, it's God, woman, children, pets, <laughs> man. <laughs> okay? And feminism is exalting the man above woman. It's a return to uh, witchcraft, obviously. But it's something that is not going to work because the Antichrist himself is going to be a man, okay? But now, in this video, video particularly, we are going to be going through the New Testament. <laughs> a lot of scripture we're going to go through in this one. As what the New Testament shows us, for you ladies, women of the Church of the Living God, what our Lord expects of you for today. Now to begin, I want us to read a part of the Sermon on the Mount. Now we have to remember, and one day, Lord willing, I might do a uh, video on the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is wonderful, beautiful loaded full with instruction and righteousness for us. Absolutely. But when it comes to the Sermon on the Mount, you have to remember a few things. Number one, pre-crucifixion, still under the law. Okay? Number two, throughout the Sermon on the Mount, it's all works. Faith is mentioned one time in the fashion of a rebuke. Okay? Number three, this pertains unto the millennial kingdom when Jesus Christ, God the Father himself, God manifest in the flesh, okay? When he come back his second time, okay, he will be ruling and reigning in Jerusalem as king, okay? We have to remember that, okay? Doctrinally, the Sermon on the Mount 
does not apply for us today within this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, but for our instruction in righteousness. This is loaded with it. But you also have to be careful. You also have to be careful. Because a lot of people who cling to this satanic pacifism go to here. Go to here. And the reason why they can do that is because in regards to the Sermon on the Mount, the Sermon on the Mount is for, like I said, the Millennial Kingdom. And they could be like that because, guess what? The King is on Earth. They ain't got to worry about you. During the millennial kingdom, but no, they're going to have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, to deal with. Okay? Comprende? Uh -huh. Okay. So, but I want to read this to you. Okay? Now, these videos, these two videos, are primarily for women. Okay? Sisters, Church of the Living God. Watch the first video. We go through a bunch of uh, Old Testament scriptures. Okay, looking at examples here. This one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to be going through a whole lot of scripture here. Okay, so I hope you're ready. But we're going to read first in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 on to verse 10. Okay, all right. Now, remember what I said about the Sermon on the Mount. Instruction and righteousness. And this also pertains on for on to us the man. Okay? But like I said, these two videos are specifically geared for you ladies, you women of the church of the living God. Okay? Got it? Okay, let's go. <clears throat> Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Again. Showing you for who, for what dispensation this is for. Okay, this is under the law, but it's meant for the millennial kingdom. Okay. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And when in regards for your instruction in righteousness to you, sisters of the church of the living God. Yeah. Yeah. For your instruction in righteousness. Okay. It is good that you be the peacemaker. It is good that you are hunger and that you hunger for righteousness. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But you have to remember though, you have to remember who the Sermon of the Mount is written to and who it is written for and that it does not apply doctrinally to us. That can become a snare to you. Okay, but if you know this and read this for instruction and righteousness sake, it will benefit you greatly. Okay, all right. Got it? Now, go to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 12. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came up on came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read? 
that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and I addressed that in the first video, okay? I addressed that in the first video. You look at Abraham, okay? The minute that Hagar got brought in, a whole bunch of trouble started. But once they put Hagar away, okay, okay, and plus, while Sarah was still the wife of Abraham, while she was still alive, Abraham married no other woman, okay? Hagar, they sent away. He, uh, he sent her away, okay? And I, I addressed that, I explained that, addressed that in the other video, okay? But, it's one wife, just one. Okay, Hagar got sent away, put her out, okay, because they sought to fulfill God's promise by their own means, through their own power, okay, Adam and Eve, one man, one woman, okay, that's what he's talking about there, and of course, when you look at the kings, all the wives, <laughs> look at Solomon, <laughs> which I also addressed in the previous video, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta remember too about the time of the kings. It was very cutthroat. You have brothers killing one another. Okay, okay, and they wanted to make sure that their lineage was secure. Okay, you get it? That's why they had a multitude of wives and different children through those wives. Comprende? Was God for it? Well, let's read. Let's pick up again in verse 4. Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh? Wherefore are they no more twain, but one flesh? What therefore God hath joined asunder, and God joined act? Beg your pardon. Where, what therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. What God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Okay? Perfect example. Again, look at the birth of Ishmael. They sought to fulfill God's promise in their own power. When it is through Isaac, you see this call. Okay? I addressed that in the other video. Watch that first, okay? Let's continue. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and put her away? He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. And right here, But from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. Now the Catholics will take this and say, for example, let's say you as a woman, you have a lost husband who beats you like a rag doll. Who is abusive to you physically. The Catholic will tell you, don't divorce your husband. Don't, don't, don't leave him. Don't leave him. We're going to look at corresponding scriptures. Okay? We're going to look at these things. A husband ought not, no way, to abuse his wife, to abuse a woman. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But, the Catholic will say, no, stay with him no matter what. Even if he beats you. No. No, 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 no. No. And then again, you have to remember, uh, as, it, uh, as it's kind of also said in the wonderful book by George Orwell, uh, 1984, <laughs> where he kind of makes the comparison, where um, to the Catholic, Marriage is just for um, being with child to bear children so that they could bring more Catholics into the world. Okay? That's basically what they teach in their catechisms. Okay? Basically. All right.
right? So you have to remember that. You have to remember that. And plus, plus, right here he says, except it be for, for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery. One fine gentleman uh, <laughs> attacked me about how my wife has been married two times before. Both of her previous husbands are dead and in hell within the parameters of Scripture. Okay? All right. But remember, this is pre-crucifixion. Christ was offering the kingdom onto the Jewish people. Okay, you have to remember that. Okay? Yes. If fornication is committed, adultery committed, yes. Scriptural grounds for divorce, yes. Yes. Okay? But keep that in mind. Christ had not died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet. Just remember that, okay? And sisters, women, don't let anybody tell you that if you have a husband who beats you, <laughs> that God doesn't want you to leave him. If he beats you, if your life is in danger from abuse like that, give me a break. Give me a break. But let's continue. <clears throat> His disciples saith unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive the saying, save they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuch for the kingdom of heaven's sake a clue right there for context kingdom of heaven okay he that is able to receive it to receive it let him receive it okay now go to mark chapter 15 mark chapter 15 mark chapter 15 verses 39 on to verse 41. <clears throat> Mark chapter 15, verses 39 on to verse 41. Now, while Jesus Christ, God the Father, was walking around on the earth, you're going to see some examples that the women ministered unto God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, okay? Check this out. Now, this is after our Lord Jesus Christ has been crucified. <clears throat> and, the, and when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the less and of Joseph and Salome, who also, when he was in Galilee, now look at this, followed him and ministered unto him, and many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. Aha! There's a clue for you sisters of the Church of the Living God, okay? Um, you have not a husband. You have not a father. Okay? To be under the spiritual headship of a pastor. Yes. Okay? And to do works such as these to minister unto others of the Church of the Living God. Okay? The pastor does not replace Jesus Christ. Okay? No, not at all. If you are a single woman and you have, you know, and you see someone as a pastor over you, you go to him. It's like, well, 
what about what what about this? Or or like you are in a situation where the conversation or whatever is getting a little too deeper than a woman should be involved in. You say, hey, I don't know, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to point to you to my pastor. Okay? Okay? The wife. Uh, hey, let me get my husband to answer your questions for you. Okay? Or let me get, let me go to my father to get the answers that you're looking for, and I can tell you, okay? But you see here in verse 41, who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him, ministered unto him, provided him things out of their own substance, okay? Now go to Luke chapter 8, verses 1 unto verse 3. Luke chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 3. The same thing. Again, instruction and righteousness for you, ladies, sisters of the Church of the Living God. Okay? And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and shewing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna the wife of Cusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. God manifest in the flesh, and these women were ministering to him of their substance. Okay, you're going to see you're going to see also in the Pauline epistles, very similar things. Okay? Go to John chapter 20. John chapter 20. You know, um, <clears throat> as sisters of the Church of the Living God, you have a special purpose in the eyes of the Lord. Okay? You were made a certain way to be soft, to be encouraging, to be nourishing, okay? And it is there's nothing wrong with a sister in Christ of the Church of the Living God making and having an income while working from home. We saw that in Proverbs chapter 31 or the 31st proverb, whatever you want to call it, okay? There is nothing wrong. God is not against a woman, a wife, a daughter who is at home making a little income. Not against it at all. Not against it at all. Okay? But there again, the woman is not to be the authority of the house. And the woman is not supposed to usurp authority over the man. We saw in the Old Testament what happens when that happens. Nothing but trouble. Okay? You might think I'm being sexist. That's what the scripture says. Okay? So, John chapter 20. <clears throat> this, is, this is interesting. This is very interesting. Okay? Very interesting. And I've heard heretics really mess this up, but I'm just going to put this out here for you, uh, okay? Just going to put this out here for you. John chapter 20, verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taketh away, taken away from the sepulchre. Mary Magdalene, okay? A woman. Verses 11 under verse 18 now. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And see it two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord 
and I know not where they have laid him. <coughs> and when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. And, and, and very quick, this is not, this is not Mary, <laughs> this is not Mary who bore Jesus Christ, all right? You Catholics, this is not Mary. It's not that Mary, okay? Sorry. Sorry, but, okay. Sorry, I, I, I had to say that, okay. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Now, we can really get in depth about verse 17, but we're not going to. But rather, note what happens. Number one, who did the Lord appear to for very first? Number two, for you sisters, look what happens. The Lord says, go tell the brethren, go tell my brethren. What does she do? She goes and tells them. A clue. You can witness to people out there, sisters. Okay? You're not supposed to preach. You're not supposed to teach. We're, we're going to look at that. Okay. You're not supposed to usurp, uh, usurp authority over the man. Okay. According to the scriptures, you are to be silent in the church and ask your husbands at home. Or if you don't have a husband, you ask your father. If you don't have father or husband, you ask your pastor. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's the way that works. Okay. But you see right here. You know, go tell my brethren. She brought word to the disciples. Okay? You can do, uh, you can do stuff like that. You can go witness to people out there. Okay? You can leave tracks. My wife, by uh, for example, my wife is wonderful at laying Brother Mullinson's tracks. She just, I mean, she comes up with ideas that I don't. It's like, whoa, my wife is very good at that. <laughs> but um, but you see that, don't you? Look at that. Look at this text. Okay? The Lord appeared unto a woman, and he sent her to go take message to the brethren. Okay? Now, let us go to the book of Acts. The book of Acts. <clears throat> Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, verses 44 on to verse 52. Acts chapter 13, verses 44 on to verse 52. Now, pay attention to this. The next day, the next Sabbath day, came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming, which a lot of the enemies here on YouTube do to a lot of the brethren. Okay? Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Perfectly explained in Romans chapter 11. Okay? 
For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light to the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all of the region. Now here, check this out. Okay, this is very similar to what we looked at in the previous video in Jeremiah 44, verses 15 on to verse 19. Go check out the next, the previous video, okay? But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and pray and raised persecution against Barnabas, against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. The Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women. They went to the women. And the women in, in return stirred up the chief men of the city. To do what? To raise persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expel them out of their coasts. There are many here on YouTube of these so-called women who do nothing but that to stir up persecution against the brethren. Okay, I can think of four right offhand whose names I'm not going to name because I'm not going to name them because that's what they want. Okay, those of you uh, brothers and even you saved Church of the Living God, you sisters, you know, it's like, oh, I know who, <laughs> yeah, I know a couple of who you might be talking about. They want to be named. Remember that. Okay, but here on YouTube, look at what they do. They stir up other people. They stir up other men. And they raise up persecution against those of the Church of the Living God who teach the Scriptures aright. Okay? And they're like cheerleaders, cheering on. Yeah, yeah. Encouraging in wickedness and very skilled at manipulation. These... Jezebel women here on YouTube. And if one of you Jezebel women are watching, I hope you I, I hope that offends you. Because guess what? You're not supposed to usurp authority over the man. Okay? Verse 51. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Okay? Okay, we saw in the gospel accounts, okay, the Lord first appeared unto a woman, unto a woman, and the women um, uh, providing sustenance unto the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, from their substance, okay? The, uh, you, you sisters out there, you getting it? Now, go to Romans. Go to Romans. Chapter 16. Uh, there are those out there who say that Paul was a chauvinist and that he hated women. Even my own father, when I brought up to him in um, uh, 1 Timothy about what he says about how a woman is not supposed to teach, my own father said, well, that's what Paul said. What? <laughs> Are you crazy? I I, I did. I, I reacted really. It's like, what? hello, what? Is this not the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God? That's what Paul said? Is this not infallible? I said, like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's like, yeah, because that's what the scripture said. But there are some out there especially those who call Paul a false prophet. <laughs> they will say, Paul is a chauvinist. He hated women. Romans chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. His thank you list in the book of Romans. Notice, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Sanchera that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her 
and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she hath been a succorer of many and of myself also. How so? Modern context for you. Give them food. Let them use to, you know, let them use a the shower, you know, with your your husband's there or whatever, or whatever, you know, let them use a the shower, you know, that kind of stuff. Provide for them what they need, that kind of stuff. Take care of them in that way. Give them a meal. They need shoes, that kind of stuff, you know, so that the work of the Lord can continue by you giving them the little things. And also, maybe being an ear to talk with. Don't know. But you see, verses 1 and 2, the first that Paul mentioned was a sister in Christ. And what did he say of this sister? That ye receive her in the Lord as become a saint, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she hath been a succorer of many and of myself also. First person, spirit, soul, and body that Paul thanks in his thank you list in Romans is a sister in Christ. Daniel, pipe and smoke. And remember in Acts where we looked at how the Jews stirred up the devout women, okay? You saw that? And in the previous video about how Jezebel was actually the real ruler of the kingdom under Ahab, you remember that? Go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 22 under verse 28. Again, Feminism is to destroy the family, destroy marriage, and to destroy man, which is not going to happen, whether they like it or not. Okay? But check this out. Here's, uh, here's a, an example of a byproduct of feminism. Verses 22 on to verse 28 in Romans chapter 1. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own bodies, to the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Female sodomites. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Look at that in verse 26. Feminism is a proponent for what the modern term is lesbianism. And will you know, I will have you know, that in the book of Leviticus where it says, man shall not lie with mankind, it is an abomination. Do you know that I have run into lesbians, female sodomites, who have actually said to my face that the Bible says a man shall not lay with a man. It doesn't say anything about a woman. I, yeah. Yes. I have had a female sodomite 
say to me that. Don't think that these feminazis who hate God, um, don't think for a moment that they aren't aware of certain things in Scripture. When you have a female sodomite saying, when I had a female sodomite say that to my face, it says, man shall not lie with man. It doesn't say anything about a woman. Uh, you take them right there to Romans chapter 1, verse 26. <laughs> okay? But I, um, to my shame, I mean, I, I did come back, you know, praise the Lord, uh, with the uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 26, but when that happened to me, I was, I had to, like, take a step back. It's like, wow. Wow. Okay. You've done your homework on how to justify your sin, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. A brother had asked of me to, um, to do a video on this. This is kind of like this. Okay, kind of on this, but we are going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Can you handle it? I know for certain that there are sisters out there, godly sisters, who obey the scriptures. Sister Catherine, Sister Jen, right offhand, two godly women, two godly women who take heed to the scriptures. Okay? You sisters out there, Sister Catherine and Sister Jen, two of the most godliest women that I know. Except my own wife, of course. <laughs> but those are sisters for those of you who want to um, talk to godly sisters as well, who uh, obey the scriptures, who do what the scriptures to say for them as women in the church of the living God, those are your examples. But, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Now, con this, now concerning, now remember again, very quickly before we go, doctrine for us today in the time of the Gentiles. Okay, this dispensation. Very important to remember that. What Jesus said about marriage was true. But you will see things that contradict, supposedly, here in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. That's the dispensational difference. Sisters, you have to rightly divide this book. Okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? So, Let's get to this. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife, and let every man, every woman, her own husband. To avoid fornication. Uh, contrary to what Catholics teach you, that marriage is just for the production of babies to avoid fornication. Also, okay, if the Lord blesses you as a husband and wife with a child, two of them, that's a blessing from the Lord. It is the reward of the Lord, your children, your sons or your daughters, okay? A help meet. The woman is to be the helpmeet onto the man. To be nurturing, soft, supportive, comforting, 
a threshing instrument when needs be. <laughs> but also, for children, if the Lord allows you to have children, and to avoid fornication. Verse 3, Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Verse 4, The wife hath not power over her own body, but the husband. That doesn't mean that you draw, draw her around on a leash or anything crazy like that. No. And that doesn't give you the right as a husband to force yourself on your wife when she absolutely doesn't want anything to do with you. But, 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 but. And likewise, the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Same principle, ladies, sisters, okay? Right here, verse 5. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be for except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Here in Jesuit America, feminism is ramped up to its height. Okay? And with how the Jesuit society here in America um, tells women how to that, what is uh, visually acceptable, I forget who it was, who, uh, it was Brother Brian who said that if one of the um, apostles of old were alive today and were to see the women uh, today walking around, he'd be like, or the prophet or apostle would be like, oh, there's nothing but harlots around here. Gotta mind how you dress there, ladies, sisters, Church of the Living God. Let's continue. But I speak by permission and not of commandment. For I would that all men were even as myself. But every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. I see therefore to the unmarried and widows. It is good for them if they abide even as I, unmarried. And notice that he says to the unmarried and widows, women who had a husband, don't have a husband, unmarried, single, okay? But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. And as one of the things that I have struggled with before as a lost man, um, that burning, and I, I, I'm, there might be children actually who watch, who might be watching this, so mom, dad, but uh, that burning, Especially on us men. Oh. Could drive you nuts. But it says there, but if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. And when you choose to give yourself over to the burning. Verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. You figure that out. Okay? Let's continue. And unto the married, and unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But and if she depart, but and if, note that, she depart, let her remain unmarried. 
or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. Let not the husband put away his wife, verse 11, but to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away pleased to dwell with him. I can only imagine what nightmare it must be living with the lost person, spirit's own body, as your spouse, whether you are male or female. Things just don't work out, do they? Pleased to dwell with him. Let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Okay? You getting this? For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Verse 15. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister. Because some will say, says let him depart. Say him depart. But right there, continuing, a brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? If you don't know what your testimony is doing, according to the scripture, to your lost husband or your lost wife, if you're married to someone who is lost, But if they be pleased to dwell with you, don't leave them. If your husband or your wife is not pleased to live with you and they are as lost as a blind man running away a race and they want to depart from you, God has called you on to peace. Let them depart sister, brother. But as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk. And so ordain I in all churches. Is any man being called, is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of God. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it. But if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise, also he that is called, being free, is Christ's servant. And for you sisters, pay attention to this. Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. Now concerning virgins. I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. I suppose, therefore, that this is good for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man so to be. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. 
Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. But and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. <laughs> Any one of you who are married, nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. But I spare you. <laughs> <laughs> but this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they have none. Now that doesn't mean that you ignore your wife or anything like that. No, no, no. And they that weep as though they wept not. And they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. And they that buy as though they possess not. And they that use this world as not abusing it. For thee, right there, there's the definition, there's the definition of it, what we just looked at. For the fashion of this world passeth away. Right there, verse 31 defines verse 29 and 30. Okay? You see that? You see that? For the fashion of this world passeth away. Our time is ending, Church of the Living God. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are the world, how he may please his wife. There's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Without distraction. Truth is, if you're not married, you can, you can, what, what, what does it say there? <clears throat> Verse 34, there's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. If you're not married... You can attend unto the Lord you know, without distraction because in marriage there are distractions. There are. You don't put one another above the Lord. The Lord comes first. Lord Jesus Christ comes first. Absolutely. Absolutely. There will be <laughs> of verse 28. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. <laughs> there is no such thing. Look, if you ain't married, let me tell you something. There ain't no such thing as a fictitious Hollywood marriage where everybody lives happily ever after and they have these so-called mighty duck moment arguments and everything gets back together and is hunky-dory. Marriage can be a real struggle sometimes. But if you have the Lord as the head, and you as the husband love your wife as your own self, and you, sister, aren't a Jezebel, and submit unto the scriptures, you'll still have problems. <laughs> But things according to the Lord's will just seem to work themselves out, don't they? For those of you who are married of the Church of the Living God, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. Verse 36, But if any man think he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age, and need so require, let him do what he will. He sinneth not. Let them marry. Nevertheless, 
He that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but hath power over his own will, and hath so decreed in his heart, that he will keep his virgin, doeth better, doeth well. So then he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. Only in the Lord. But she is happier if she so abide after my judgment. And this is sarcasm on Paul's part. And I think also that I have the Spirit of God, capital S. And for those of you who have, who have attacked me because my wife had two former husbands who died, verse 39, give yourself. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I already did uh, 1 Corinthians 11 in the previous video. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verses 34 on to verse 36. Okay? Right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verses 34 on to verse 36. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. What? Came the word of God out from you, or came it unto you only? If any man... Think himself to be a prophet or spiritual. Let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. I know I said to it, but we're going to read this. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Now, if you don't have a husband, you ask your father. Go to your pastor. Okay? If here online, there are places that, uh, Brian Denlinger, okay, you can go to him. Learn from him, okay? There are brethren online, sisters, that you can learn from. Truly saved, truly born again of the Church of the Living God, who are King James Scripture believing Church of the Living God, okay? But, building hirelings, as Brother Alexander say, skull and crossbone, stay away from them. Okay? Now, go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 23, under verse 33. Uh, oh, excuse me, verse 22 under verse 20, uh, 33. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife. The husband is head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, let the wives be to their own husbands in some things. No, in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, 
but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Crossing dispensational lines there, do you got that? This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Not control him. <laughs> That's what Jezebel did. Sisters, you are supposed to be submissive unto your husband, unto your father, and your um, the pastor who is um, who you go to to uh, get information and that kind of stuff. He doesn't rule over you, but your spiritual head. It's not that you pray to your pastor or pray through your pastor, or nothing like that. No, 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 no. Spiritual covering. Till the Lord give you a husband. Okay? You go to the Lord yourself. Absolutely. 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 Colossians chapter 3, verses 18 on to verse 19. Very quickly. Just two verses here. Colossians chapter 3, verses 18 on to verse 19. Wives... Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. But now go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 14 on to verse 23. Now we exhort you, brethren, Warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Now, verse 14, okay? Brethren, now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, Comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Okay? Verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In Everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now this, here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 14 on to verse 23, for you sisters, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. And abstain from all appearance of evil. Verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, Warn them that are unruly. Yes, a sister can definitely do that. 
uh, excuse me, that that's not how the scripture is supposed to do that. You're not supposed to be doing that. Comfort the feeble-minded, definitely. Support the weak. And if a sister can handle it, be patient toward all men. <laughs> See that none render evil for evil unto any man. That goes both ways. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Now, we go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Oh, by the way, we're going to read this whole thing. Hope you can handle it. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have some men to be saved. Uh, just so you know, here is a very easy refutation of Calvinism. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly away, a costly array. Excuse me. Modest apparel. You don't wear clothes that show off your body. You don't uh, dress in a way that shows off things that only your husband should be seeing. You don't dress like the Jesuits of the world tell you to. I heard it uh, said once, and beg your pardon, um, if you're not selling, don't advertise. Shamefacedness and sobriety, with broidered, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Broidered hair, gold or pearls, Reminiscent to the uh, Mother of Harlots, Mystery of Babylon. And also to Jezebel. Uh-huh. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. That's what Paul said. Yeah. 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 And uh, who is the author of this book? The scriptures? Huh? Like I told you, my own father said, well, that's just what Paul said. Really? Really? Is this not doctrine for us today? What, this doesn't apply today? Yeah. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. And again, you say, some will say, Paul was a chauvinist. Romans 16, verses 1 through 2. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. 
And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Adam was not deceived. It says plainly. This is where some will go to say that um, Adam chose to go along and die with his wife. Like I said, it says right here, Adam was not deceived. Adam knew, but he went along because he hearkened unto his wife. And we see the consequence of that. Okay? Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Doesn't mean that you're earning your salvation. Not at all. Not at all. Okay? Just so you know. Now, 1 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 13. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient. Not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice being, not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. What is the condemnation of the devil? Pride. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are, which are without, lest he fall into reproach in the snare of the devil. What is the snare of the devil? Pride. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved, then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own house as well. For they that have used the office of a deacon will purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now, from what we just read, where do you fit a female woman preacher or teacher? You don't. Unless you get one of the Alexandrian Roman Catholic Bibles. Bibles. Hopefully, Lord willing, that's going to be the next video that I'm going to work on today. That will be the first one uploaded. So, anyway. Where do you see room for a woman to, you, to usurp authority over a man in spiritual matters or even in practical matters? You don't. You don't. And feminists hate that strong-willed women. Rebellious women, okay? Rebellious women against the Lord, against the Lord. And of course, 1 Timothy 5, 9, on to verse 16. Now this is specifically talking about widows. But, sisters, note the details. 1 Timothy 5, verses 9, on to verse 16. Let not a widow be taken into the number under threescore years old, having been 
the wife of one man. Now look at verse 10. Well reported of for good works, if she have brought up children. If you're single, okay. If she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. But the younger widows refuse, for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And with all they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers and busy bodies, and, but tattlers also and busy bodies, speaking things which they ought not. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully, for some are already turned aside after Satan. Look at verse 10 again. Okay? Now remember, she's talking about widows. But look at verse 10. If she had brought up children, if you're single or don't have children, okay. If she have lodged strangers if she have washed the saints feet lodge strangers and wash the saints feet given provision unto the uh, saints the church of the living God your brothers or your sisters lodged strangers but uh, bought something for the poor or literally lodged a stranger before okay I know that today that would be very dangerous to do, but there are other ways. Give someone uh, who needs food something to eat, that kind of thing. Okay? If she have relieved the afflicted, same principle. If she have diligently followed every good work. Every good work. And in these two videos we have been looking at for you sisters, what are good works? For you, not to be saved. No, no. But what our Lord expects of you as a sister of Christ. Okay? Now, 2 Timothy 3, verses 1, verse 9. Second Timothy 3, verses 1, under verse 9. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, Lovers of pleasure is more than lovers of God. Hello. <laughs> Look outside. Look at Jesuit America. Look at your nation. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. Look at verse 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, lusts, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Oh, I can think of a few people here on YouTube. <laughs> now as Janais and Jambres, which was, which, at. Eh, now, as Janais and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be, ma shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. Look at verse 6 again. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. Who does Satan go for first, usually? The woman. 
Look at the Garden of Eden. He went to who? Eve first. Like I said in the previous video, when I was working and my wife was home on a Sunday morning, the Jehovah's Witnesses would come over here and try to talk to my wife while I wasn't home. That's from the devil. That's what devils do. They go after the wife while the husband ain't around. See. See. And uh, sisters, you need to be aware of that. Okay? Now go to Titus chapter 2. We're almost done, actually. This one's actually a little bit uh, um, shorter than the first video. Titus chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 8. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be, now right here, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. If you are not obedient to your husband, the word of God is blasphemed. And if you do not have a husband, to be discreet, to be chaste. Keepers at home, good. Young men exhort, uh, likewise exhort to be sober-minded. In all things, shewing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine, shewing uncorruptness, corruptness, uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. And that goes both ways. And finally, and finally, 1 Peter 3, 1 through 7. 1 Peter 3, 1 through 7. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. By the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. If you, are, if you do not have a, a father or a husband, note that. Note that. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on apparel. Remember, to dress um, moderately, to uh, modestly, excuse me, to dress modestly. Not to draw attention to your body by the way you dress. Again, harlots dress to bring attention to themselves by their bodies. Okay? Modest apparel. Let's continue. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. A meek and quiet spirit. I have known women who have a very big mouth and are hardly meek and hardly quiet. Some I've even known to be professing Christians. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. 
You know, sisters, I have seen women in my time who were so knock dead gorgeous on the outside, but when you speak with them on the inside, they're full of dead men's bones. Personally, it's who my wife is on the inside. Not, in this, not who she is on the outside. That doesn't mean that you go around looking like an unmade bed or anything. Okay? No. But, the outside is hardly as important to who you are on the inside. And sister, if you're saved, you have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within you. Who is that hidden man of your heart? Sister? Sisters? I, I used to say, sometimes I wish I were deaf and blind. That way you can know who a woman is without seeing, without hearing. Something like, oh boy, that'd be kind of difficult. Yeah, but you'd love who they truly were rather than what your uh, senses tell, uh, tell you who they are. Let's continue. And it says here that a woman is to be meek and of a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. These women here on YouTube who... You know, do the rah rah th rah things for a bunch of these uh, uh, coadjutors. <laughs> the Jezebels. And when they get called out, they backtrack and they feign themselves meek and quiet. But when you see them in comments, they're like, oh, wow, wow. Let's continue. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah, Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Already looked at that. My Lord having pleasure also. Whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Some uh, some women will try to convince you that they uh, are not weak, but the truth are. The truth is, they are the weaker vessel. Because God created them to be that way so they can nourish and bring up children, so they can be a compassionate help meet on to the man. Remember, God, man, woman, children. Not God, woman, children, pets, man. Okay? That's not the order of things. Okay? That's not the order of things. <laughs> but it says here for us men, if any of you uh, men watch this, that your prayers be not hindered. It says, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Oh, they can boast. Some of them can really boast a loud game, right? They can use their words. They can do whatever. They're the weaker vessel. And dwell with them according to knowledge, giving them honor, that your prayers be not hindered. Those of you of the Church of the Living God, if some of you, uh, those of you who are married, having struggles, are you honoring your wife? And those of you of the Church of the Living God, 
sisters, are you submitting unto your husbands? And if you are not married, serve the Lord. You can, we have seen, you're not supposed to preach or teach. A woman can hand out tracts. Like I said, my wife is very good at that. Okay? You can witness. You can witness. You can tell people your testimony. Okay? There are things you, as a woman, can do. Absolutely. You're not supposed to preach or teach. And we have already established that through the scriptures. Okay? This actually went a little bit quicker than I thought it was going to go for this video. But, nonetheless, that will do it for this video. And uh, My wife is home. It's uh, a little in the afternoon now. Um, got one more video to do, which will be uploaded first before these are uploaded. So, when you see the, if you see this, and it's like, Brad, you already uploaded that first. <laughs> That's why. Sisters, you have to remember that one of the things of the devil and of the Jesuit order, they're pushing feminism to destroy the family, to destroy um, <laughs> a lot of things, to just, you know, to bring down the man, to insult God. And feminism is to, to destroy the family, to promote lesbianism, female sodomy, and it is an abomination in the sight of God. I believe we have proved that conclusively. So, anyway, that's, that's going to be it for this video. Um, I hope this has helped some of you sisters. I hope so. Uh, the Lord be glorified. That's all I care about. That the Lord be glorified. Um, thank you for watching if you do I'm going to chill for a little bit and I got one more video to do today and um, so the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord Jesus Christ God our Father be glorified that's all I care about and in Jesus name thank you Amen bye bye